Your Life Unfiltered podcast with your hosts, Ketuka Thari and Deepam Jane. In this episode, we dig deep into the life experiences of our guests to connect the dots between their upbringing and what they're doing today. Today, we have special guest, Ruti Desai. Ruti, if you want to quickly introduce yourself. Sure. Thanks so much for having me. My name is Ruti. I'm from the Bay Area. I grew up in San Jose. I went to Cal, Go Bears, and I've been living in San Francisco for the last five-ish years. Um, I currently work at Visa. I'm part of the innovation and design team. This past year, I also launched a hair care company called Terra Edition with my best friends from college. And in my free time, I love traveling and hiking. I'm excited to talk to you guys today. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Thanks so much for that introduction. So I have a lot of questions already, but we'll take them one question at a time. So the first question I have is, you know, what was it like growing up in the West Coast? I mean, I know you've traveled all over the place, but I'm sure you have thoughts about West Coast versus elsewhere. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I loved growing up in California. Like I said, I love hiking. And I think, you know, hiking is very accessible in California. Like growing up, my family lived near a couple of county parks. So every weekend we would, you know, be out on the trails hiking. Um, and then it was so easy to do like a lot of family trips. Like we would go to a bunch of national parks in California. And yeah, overall, I mean, I've, I've loved living here. I think that's the reason I haven't left yet. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, what's your, uh, the, the fondest memory that you remember from the childhood when it comes to uh, these hikes? My fondest memory? Hmm. That's a hard one. I think like going to a lot of national parks, like for example, Yosemite is in California. And even to this day, like every time I go, it's, it's unbelievable. I love it. And I think, you know, just going on these trips with my family has really, you know, been, I, I think have, has kind of shaped who I've become today. And I think it's the reason why I love hiking and traveling so much. And I think it's really because of my parents. Um, like my, my Instagram handle is Bruthie the Explorer, but I always like to joke that my parents are the OG explorers. Like they're the reasons that I, I am who I am today. That is awesome. Yeah, so you got inspired by your your parents' lifestyle, basically. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Like, so I'm sure you must have, like, some incredible stories of, like, places your parents have been to, right, since they were the OG explorers. Like, I mean, have you heard about, like, any specific, like, destinations that they visited that, you know, really inspired you? Um, I'm blanking right now, but I would say, like, even as a child, like, I've traveled a lot with my parents, like, even to this day, like, every year, we, we try to do a couple family trips together, um, which is always really fun. I I feel like, like, most of my travels actually have been with my family. Like, I've gone to most national parks with them, like, the last couple of years, we went to Yellowstone, Glacier, and then even internationally, like, we've traveled to like most of Europe together. I've done Asia, like Thailand, China. And I'm just, I think I'm really lucky and happy. I've gotten to have these experiences with my parents and I have an older sister and brother-in-law and now a new niece as well. And, and they also love traveling. So it's been really fun to do these things with them. Awesome. Um, so with the, I obviously we, we are connected on Instagram and I, I keep, uh, <laughs> I keep seeing your stories from time to time. I think it's probably every week or every other week. Maybe it's a stretch. Maybe you're just spreading your stories out. But it's it feels like you're always, always on the go. And clearly you, you work full time. So I'm just curious as everybody else here. How do you manage uh, the travel that you do with your full time job? And maybe you can talk about your, your recent experience. Uh, I believe it was Peru, the, the big one. Yeah, good question. I I feel like I get this question very often. Um, I, I'm like, where do I start? I think I, I always like to share this quote, which is my favorite quote, which I live by and I think tells a lot about me is live life as if everything is rigged in your favor. And I always hear from people like, you know, I, I can't afford to travel there. I don't have enough time. Like work's too stressful. My hours are too long. But I, I really feel like life is too short and we, we need to make time for the things that we love and for 
you know, the places we want to go, the adventures we want to have, even, you know, just spending time with your friends and family, like you have to make time. And I think that's why, like, even though, you know, I love my job, my, I, I work like a normal nine to five, but I still do try to find the time for the things that I want to do. Like having a work-life balance is so, so important. Um, and I, I, I guess to like answer your question, really, I, I feel like I one like plan my vacations like very much in advance so that my team knows like when I'm going and I'm going to be out nice, nice. for a couple of weeks. I also just take advantage of three day weekends and just, you know, maybe like traveling like Friday after work and then coming back Monday morning or Sunday evening. So just taking advantage of time. Um, if like usually like weekend trips, I'll just go like somewhere more local, like a national park. But of course, like the international ones, you have to plan like right. way far in advance. So I think just giving my team that notice. And um, I think just like when you start a new job, just making sure like your team is aware, like this is something I'm really passionate about. Like I love traveling and making sure that they also support having a work-life balance and I think I'm lucky right. that my team at Visa is very similar to me like they they appreciate a work-life balance they all have families they like to travel and overall like finding that culture I think was really important when I was looking for a job got it got it well it sounds like you always you basically set the expectations correctly with them as well as for yourself right so you, you have to like let uh uh, plan things well as you said so that's all you know kind of planning meticulously to make sure you're uh, able to manage both the work and then the travel simultaneously that's great that's awesome so you travel so much right it sounds like you've been to a lot of different continents what has been your favorite your favorite country or city that you visited Ooh. I would okay I can I pick two so I of course love hiking and I would say like hiking heaven that I've been to at least has been Iceland and Patagonia. And I think both of those are just really beautiful places that have a mix of waterfalls, glaciers. There's so many different landscapes, which have just been so, so beautiful. And I hope I can go back to both again. But Patagonia, for example, is a pain to get to. It took me like almost 30 hours to get there because you have to take like so many flights and buses, but it was beautiful. So it was worth wait, wait. it was worth the struggle, basically, is what you're saying. It's worth the struggle to get there. Yeah, it's really hard to get there. Where is Patagonia? I, I don't know. Um, so it's that. Chile and Argentina. Uh, it's it's really, really south. Um so when I, I went see. there, I actually went like right after I graduated college. So I of course I mean after I yeah, after I graduated college, so I of course didn't have a lot of savings at that time. So I was only there for I wanna say like two or three weeks, but everyone I met there basically had like quit their jobs they were like traveling for months um many had actually gone to Antarctica because like where the cruise ships leave from Antarctica is like the town that I was in so it was like so so south I wish I was able to go to Antarctica at the time because now I'm gonna have to make the trek all the way down there again but I I really want to go one day my goal is to try to go to all the continents before I turn 30. So I still have Antarctica and I also want to do like Australia and New Zealand in the next couple of years. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's like, well, Australia is on my list too. And only for one reason, kangaroos. Oh <laughs> my gosh, yes. They're so cute. It's the, yeah. uh, I think it's the only country slash continent that has that, that animal, right? I don't, uh, yeah, I don't think anyone, does New Zealand have kangaroos? I don't think so, right? I think it's just Australia. Probably they imported from Australia. I've been there. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's just Australia, so that's why I want to go there. It's yeah. like the one place on the planet you can actually see kangaroos. Yeah. That is true. That's that a good true. reason. A, <laughs> and also, it's it's closer to the West Coast compared to the East Coast. So another reason for you to visit both West yeah. Coast and Australia. <laughs> oh, so Sadiq has been trying to get me to come back to San Francisco, the San Francisco Bay Area for a while. <laughs> yeah, he drops, you should. He drops hints here and there. <laughs> You should, you should. We'd have fun. And you, you're trying to get me to New York, I know. So yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. Just paying off of each other. Yeah. Well, I'm but, definitely going to visit. Hopefully... I'm definitely well, going to yeah. visit. I, like, I don't know about like living there right now because I have a lot, a lot going on at the moment, but visiting for sure, I'm definitely going to plan to visit a couple times a year, so <laughs> we'll make that happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. As I will to New York whenever uh, in the next couple of months. 
What's your next trip uh, that's coming up, Preeti? I am trying to figure that out, actually. <laughs> so I've been, you know, doing some research. I I think a lot of places I want to go to are actually better in the summer, and you know, now it's already August. So I don't know how much time I have, but I have been doing research to go to the Dolomites in Italy, maybe next year. Um, mm-hmm. Like I said, nice. I really like planning ahead. I'm like planning one year in advance already, but. Um yeah, definitely lots of places on my list. So, let's see like what makes sense like flight wise, temperature wise <laughs> based on the month. <laughs> yeah. And given the temperature, even the summers are going to be a little bit challenging, I feel like I and I can speak for it because I was in uh, Europe earlier this year. So, I celebrated my birthday in, back in June. And it was super hot in Spain. It was in in Celsius like 37 degrees for like mid 90s. So oh, wow. I mean it's really hot. You can't really do much during during that. So yeah, even during the summer it's going to get a little bit hot. Like I at least if you're in the the plains and if you go to the mountains it may may get better. So Yeah, definitely. That is true. But no, yeah, got it. Got to do research for going because then it's either too hot or too cold or too rainy. <laughs> It is a little bit surprising. I I thought you must have you must have already like three four trips planned already, but you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so um, uh, so you've been traveling quite a bit, uh, with the. I just have a, a question. You know, obviously, we the pandemic hit a couple of years ago, right? It was a huge huge thing for the entire humanity, essentially, right? And travel wise, how did you cope up with the you know the sudden work from home and stay at home situation? uh that's like a sudden transition that we had to make from outside to home how do you de- how do you dealt with it how how do you deal with it how, how did you did you have any mechanism to kind of work around or things like that do you want to share your experience yeah great question i think i i i think the reason i was i feel like i was okay is because like i said i love hiking and being in california it's so easy to do um and it was you can go on trails where there wasn't that many people so although like you know i wasn't traveling as much the beginning of the pandemic like i i don't think i traveled internationally for a good like year or two but i was still able to just explore california which honestly i i was really happy about because i think like pre covid anytime i had a vacation with our limited pto days i was always trying to go to different countries but because i wasn't able to do that i was really just able to explore my backyard there were so many different trails in my neighborhood that i hadn't been on before so i think it it kind of motivated me to just you know get outdoors in california since i hadn't done that before and it was i was think i was lucky that i was still able to stay active and like not see too many people on the trail whereas right. like i think if i was in a bigger city like new york it definitely would have been harder during the beginning of the pandemic but yeah I I'm so happy to be in California. <laughs> no, I I and I can attest to that because I also I I didn't obviously hike too much but I did do a couple of them uh during the pandemic where there weren't many people so definitely attest <laughs> to that fact. And I was in San Jose at that time so there's like quite a bit more hiking trails there in that region than uh, yeah, there definitely. are. Yeah, definitely. South Bay is great. Um so I totally feel you that there's so many trails to explore. I I still don't feel like I've been to all of them or explored everything but it's been kind of fun during covid to to go do that since i didn't re- i feel like i didn't really have the time or the motivation to do that prior to the pandemic got it that makes sense all right so i actually have a question now so you traveled so much right so like what if i i imagine you probably have like a plan to like make it cost effective and all that kind of stuff so like what advice would you have to people that want to travel but then what's holding them back from traveling as much as they want to it just how costly it is yeah i mean traveling is expensive i get it like especially if you're in college or like a new grad um i would say like first of all you don't have to go far like you can make really fun trips just from like doing road trips around your neighborhood um i think that's how i kind of started was just like driving to national parks that were near me um you can also camp camping for the most part is like really cheap to like it's like 15 20 bucks for a campsite and you can go to some really beautiful places. So I would say first off just start small. Like you don't need to go to Europe or go somewhere really expensive. 
Um, and then second, of course, like start saving up for things that you want to do. Like I always have like, like mentally like a savings account, like for travel, like every month, like this is how much I want to save so that like I can go on a bigger trip. Um, and then I guess also just travel with like your friends, with your family, because then you can share expenses. You can share like accommodations like Airbnbs or hotels, car rentals, like all of those things can cost a lot. But if you're traveling with people, you can split those expenses. And of course, it's just fun traveling with your friends and family. Yeah. I hope that kind of answers your question. <laughs> yeah, no, it does. I think Ketan was looking more for like specific websites where you book your cheap. Oh, well, sorry, <laughs> sorry. That did not yeah, answer I'm your question. Kidding, well, it, it did, but that would have been even better. It's like, you know, um, yeah, like specifically say... usable stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well first I just use Google Flights always because you can they have like a map feature so if you don't know where you want to go but you have a budget you can just like look up potential dates and then it'll show you like different flight options to different places across the world like in a map setting which is really fun because it helps you like explore new places like if you're on a budget and also if you have flexible dates it's a good way to just explore and find cheap trips and then I would say second is just credit card points um I am a huge proponent of getting different credit cards um I've had like several airlines cards like American Airlines United I currently have the Chase Sapphire Reserve which I know is very expensive but if you travel a lot it's actually worth it because I want to say it's like five six hundred dollars annual fee but you get three hundred dollars back travel credit so like if you book a flight or like ubers or anything you automatically get that money back um and then you also get global entry tsa pre which is game changer and then you also get lounge pass which if you're traveling a lot is totally worth it um I, I would say I'm a budget traveler so sometimes I try to split up my flights when I'm going somewhere so I end up being in the airport for long amounts of time so having a lounge is great because you get free food sometimes they have sleeping pods if you're like if it's like a weird time that you're that you have a layover um so yeah I would say like definitely like look into these credit cards I think this is also because you know I work in fintech <laughs> But oh, I, didn't, really I, didn't even make that, yeah. I think this is a good segue also into my passion for financial health and why I've decided to go into fintech um, if you want me to talk about that no, go for it go for it, go for it. <laughs> also wait did I answer your question though about, about... yes yes you did don't worry you did <laughs> sorry I got too excited um I'm like, where do I start about financial health? This is just something I am so, so passionate about, like as passionate about as hiking, I think. Um, I think it's also because of how I grew up, like similar to hiking, um, my parents have also been the reason I've gotten into financial health. I think at a young age, my parents taught me the importance of saving, you know, creating a budget, investing my earnings, you know, saving up for these adventures that I want to go on. And then I think you know, when I went to college, I realized that so many of my friends didn't have these same habits. Like many people didn't trust financial institutions. They were afraid of getting a credit card. And even to this day, like I'm now like five years out of school. So many people don't have 401ks. They're not like saving for retirement or, you know, like future trips or a house or anything like that. And I think seeing my community, um, and like basically my friends not having these habits that has really just made me really really even more passionate about financial health and I think you know people always ask me like how do you afford to go on these trips and things like that and I feel like it's so important to save for the things that you want because unfortunately to to go on trips and hike and things like that you do need you do need money which is unfortunate but you do need to be able to take care of your finances work hard in your day job um but you know really be able to to understand these concepts so that you can have financial freedom and independence and not constantly stress about to about reaching your short-term and long-term goals um so I'm, I think I'm, I'm really happy also that like my day job is at Visa. I work in innovation and design. So we're always thinking about these things like financial health. I'm currently working on projects around youth banking, um, 
about the underbank accessibility, things like that. And it's, it's something I'm really passionate about. And I am happy I'm, I'm able to do that in my day job as well. That is awesome. awesome. That is awesome. So it's like, it sounds like in your life right now, you've combined two things you absolutely love, financial health and traveling. So that's, that's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. And I have a question on, on this, Ruthie. So you, it looks like, or it sounds like it involves a lot of planning on your part, a lot of, you know, upfront thinking, a lot of thinking ahead on your part to plan uh, the things that you, you want to spend money on and your, you know, expenses and so on. Do you have any uh, tips or maybe it's, it's more than one for people who are uh, struggling with financial health? What, what are the, the, you know, low hanging fruit that they can just really go after like right now? Any one or two tips from your yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like there's so many tools out there now to help you with money management. So for example, I use Mint and I have like all of my accounts on there. So then I can easily see like, this is how much money like I'm investing, like how much I have in my checking savings account, um, even through like Visa, like my 401k, like everything is on there in one place. And I think that makes it really easy for me to like easily and quickly see like how much money I have. And like how much I need to start saving for Um, there's, I would say there's also a a lot of like new like tools like acorns money lion. So if you're just starting out and you don't really know what to do, they kind of serve as guides to help you through that. Um, And then I guess the second thing is I feel like a lot of people are just scared and just don't be scared. Like, it's okay. You're going to learn as you go. Um, Like I I talk to a lot of my friends that don't really invest in the stock market, for example, because they feel like they don't have enough money to do that. But honestly, you don't need a lot. Like you can just start off with like five, $10 and just do something that's not as risky. Like you could do the S and P 500, for example. Okay. And don't quote me on this, but you could just, you know, invest in something like that is lower risk and you don't have to put that much money, but just starting somewhere, you're going to learn so much. And I think it's just going to help you become less scared as well. Sounds good. So it lo- basically it's uh, just to summarize from my own words, it's really just uh, visualize or just record, start, you know, seeing where your money is going or it's coming from and in one or two places so that you have like a visibility in what's really going on. And from there, you can start to manage, uh, you know, uh, budgets towards certain activities that you're interested in and expenses yeah. and so on. Definitely. And I mean, for trips, just just plan ahead. See if you can cut down costs in other ways. Like I said, sometimes I'll take like multiple flights I'll camp in ten. Um, even in my day to day life, I feel like I try to cut expenses like in places like instead of Ubering, I'll take the bus or walk or instead of like eating out every day, I'll cook like you can do little things like that just to start saving small mm-hmm. amounts because I feel like when you're in college or just coming out, like, of course, your salary is not going to be like crazy high. So you just have to start saving in smaller ways so that you can reach your bigger goals. That's awesome. Yeah, that's incredible advice there. Um, so I wanted to segue a little bit because the other, the opposite of that, right? So when it comes to financial health, I think there's two pieces, right? One is retain as much money as you can, which is the saving mentality. And then the other is make money off the money that you save. So I know you talked about 401ks and investing and all that, but what about entrepreneurship? So I want to make a segue to your, uh, your hair care startup, Terra Edition. If you can tell everyone a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. Um, so the it's been actually almost two years since we started working on it. So basically um, I have three co-founders. It's like my three best friends from college and we started a hair care company about two years ago. Last year, we finally launched our product, AKA you can start buying it on our website and it has just been so exciting. I have learned so much. I think coming into it, um, I was really excited about hair care. I've been dyeing my hair red since I was high school, since high school. So I've always been really into hair care and I feel like skincare hair care is just very important. I mean, it's something that makes us feel so confident and it's a way to, you know, to express ourselves. You know, if you have like a bad haircut, you're definitely going to be like really sad and, you know, hair is just such an important part of who we are um so I've always just you know been interested in hair care but of course being an entrepreneur is like a whole different thing like there was so many aspects I maybe 
you know, didn't know what I would have to do, like, for example, um, all the finances, like we had to do all the finances, accounting ourselves, um, set up the entire supply chain, you know, like where we bought our bottles, where we sourced the ingredients, like all of those things. This past year, we also submitted um, a patent our, on our formula. So, you know, doing the whole legal aspect. So there's been definitely a lot of parts that I didn't expect, but I have learned so much through the experience. And I'm happy that I've gotten to do it with my three best friends. Um, we are all doing it though part-time like we all have full-time jobs so it's of course not moving as quickly as we thought but that's okay I mean we're still learning so much and hopefully this will slowly grow into something bigger and we'll slowly start getting new products out there as well that's awesome can you tell us a little bit about like the experience of like how that went like how does like the well I'm assuming you guys designed the formula and all that from scratch right the packaging all that like how was that experience yeah, like how did we how did we get there? Um, so exactly. I guess so I'm lucky that one of my co-founders is a chemist, so she has the skill set. Um, she's had many years of experience formulating products, so we fortunately were able to do everything in house. So once we awesome. decided we wanted to do something, we basically bought all of the equipment and we literally started in a garage. So we bought all of her equipment, all the ingredients, and then we just started testing out different formulas. And then we did a bunch of user testing on our friends and family, and then slowly iterated the formula for about a, about a year until we launched. There was many, many iterations. Okay, that's awesome. Sorry, quickly, uh, could you talk a little bit more about how did you get the idea of this product in the first place? Yeah, good question. Sorry, I should have started with that. So our product is a pre-shampoo. And for those of you that, you know, don't know what a pre-shampoo is because it's not that common in, in hair care routines yet. It's basically a product that you put in your hair five, 10 minutes before you go shower. Um, and then you just continue with your hair care routine as normal. Like you shampoo conditioner etc and the way we came up with this is at the beginning we did a bunch of user research we interviewed our friends and family and we found out that a lot of women were doing hair masks um, specifically in between shampoo and conditioner um, so what that means is you shampoo your hair and then you would put the <coughs> hair mask into your wet hair and you would either have to get out of the shower for 15, 20, sometimes 30 minutes to an hour, get back in the shower or literally stand there. Like a few girls said that they would just stand there in the shower on their phone, like scroll through Instagram or something for 20 minutes, um, which was so inconvenient because you're literally like, like wet in the shower, but you want to do this hair mask because you want to keep your hair healthy and strong. Um, so we noticed that that was a huge pain point. And then the second thing we noticed was a lot of women were doing hair oils, which is, you know, very common in Indian culture as well. Like I grew up putting coconut oil in my hair, but again, it's very messy and it's also really hard to wash out. So once we were hearing these pain points over and over again, we were like, okay, well, can we create something so we can take out this step? So basically our pre-shampoo, you put in your hair five, 10 minutes before you go shower on your dry hair. And it essentially has the same hair health benefits as doing an overnight mask or doing this mask in between shampoo and conditioner. So we were basically trying to solve, solve this pain point. Sorry, that was a really long answer. <laughs> No, 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 but it makes uh, it makes a lot of sense. Maybe we don't appreciate Ketul and I as much, but I'm sure the our female listeners will definitely appreciate this a uh, lot and, more than. And we want to do a quick plug as well. So if you guys are interested in getting this free shampoo, <laughs> make sure to give at Terra Edition a follow on Instagram, and the link to order should be in the bio link. Um, Thank also you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for supporting me, you all. Uh, and also, if you guys want to learn more about travel, locations, inspirations, etc., give Ruthie a follow. Her handle is at Ruthie Explorer. Again, that's at Ruthie Explorer. It's just like Door Explorer, except with Ruthie. <laughs> Thank you both. This for has sure. been so fun. Absolutely. I'm basically trying to refer to the, that Steve Jobs, uh, you know, commencement speech. I don't know if you heard. Basically, he, he talks about how you can only connect the dots looking backward, but never looking forward. 
Uh, do you agree with that? Or oh yeah, or yeah, the quote. What are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, like, yeah, as I look back on my experiences, yeah, I definitely see that there are a lot of connections. Um, I feel like I'm someone who, you know, kind of goes with the flow. Like, when I see an opportunity, I'll just go for it and take initiative. Um, and I think that's kind of just how I live my life. Like, like I said, like, you know, my favorite quote is, you know, live life like everything's rigged in your favor. Like, I feel like everything is meant to be just like, keep going after the things that you love, the things, you know, if you see something you want to try, just go for it. Like, what's the worst that's going to happen? So I feel like that's just kind of how I live my life. And as I look back at, you know, my travels, like how I got to Visa or, you know, even starting Terra Edition, I think it's you know, just something I've been interested in. And I'm like, why not? Just go for it. Try it out. And if it doesn't work out, that's okay. I'm going to learn something from it. I'm going to maybe meet a new friend or, you know, just have fun. So I think, yeah, definitely looking back, lots of connections. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Um, okay. Uh, just uh, related to that, Riti, how much of your success or whatever you've been able to achieve uh, so far, how much of that do you attribute to the hard work and how much do you attribute to the luck or how much do you attribute to, to the to the drive that you have essentially sure um i mean i would say it's definitely a mix of hard work and just passion i would say like most of the things i've done is just because i'm like really interested and passionate about it and i i also feel like if you love something and you're excited about it it's not as stressful and it won't seem like work um so maybe sometimes you know i am working crazy hours you know i'm doing my nine to five job at visa but then i'm working on terror edition like in the evenings i'm traveling on the weekends you know like i am very busy and it sometimes is very, very stressful, but it doesn't feel like stress because I love every moment of it and I'm excited about these things. So I feel like, you know, I I'm, I don't know if it's like just hard work. Of course, it's a lot of hard work, but it's also just passion and finding the things that I like. And it doesn't feel like stress and hard work because I like it. That's That's amazing. That sounds awesome. Yeah, I completely agree with that sentiment. I feel like even if you do a lot of things, if you're also doing things that stimulate you, mm -hmm. that's when it doesn't feel like work, right? Whether it's something you're passionate about, something that excites you, something that just is so exhilarating because it's completely new. It's something you've never done before. And I think people in general are very different. There's like some people that just want to do the same stuff because they're, you know, they don't want to get outside of the comfort zone. And then there's people that want to constantly do new things because they love the thrill of going outside of the comfort zone, right? Like visiting a new country, a new city, starting a new entrepreneurship venture, reading something new, whatever it might be. But that's awesome. It's just like, I think we mentioned a couple of times, but if you combine like multiple of your passions together and it's like, it's almost seamlessly a part of your life now, which is awesome. Yeah. And just to add to that, Ketul, I, I think you and I are, are, are also kind of the same way, right? We are also, <laughs> uh, we've spoken about this before with you. I don't know if you uh, listened to any, any of our episodes before, but uh, Ketur and I are the same way, right? We also just go after things, you know, what's the worst that could happen, right? So, and this this venture is actually, that's how we came, came to the idea of, uh, you know, starting this podcast and uh, we, we got to meet you as well. So that's, that's uh, yeah, no, uh, I agree. I love how you guys have just gone for it and started this podcast and I hope you continue with it. It's been so fun listening in and hearing everyone's stories and yeah, props to you guys. This is awesome. And I, I feel like, yeah, we all kind of have the same ideas on, you know, how we want to live life, like what's important. And I think that's just so great. I'm glad we were all able to connect through this. Awesome. Absolutely. All right. Um, I guess we can switch gears, I think, now. Deepam, if you want to do the rapid fire round. For sure. For sure. So, Riti, as the name suggests, we... we do a rapid fire first thing that comes to your mind i have a series of questions and i just go one by one are you ready okay yeah all right let's do it uh tea or coffee tea all right mountains or beaches mountains <laughs> i was i was curious to hear your response to this one uh okay she did say hiking right she said she's a huge fan of hiking so <laughs> mountains make sense that, that is, is true, true. true uh morning person or night owl I think night all right, all right. What's your favorite uh, comfort food? Ooh, definitely Mexican food. 
Like, I feel like nice. I could always eat, like, a burrito. Right. <laughs> or some can guacamole. You, can you eat spicy? I think I can eat pretty spicy. I don't know if everyone would agree that my spice is a high spice tolerance. <laughs> okay, well, I was going to say, because Mexican food can be spicy. Food. So it's, like, it's a good food if you like spicy foods. See, yeah, that's a debatable uh, topic, right? Like, how spicy is spicy? And uh, especially for Indian people, it's just... Uh, um, a different story. <laughs> All right. What's your favorite virtue in others? Um, the honesty. Okay. Uh, what's your biggest pet peeve? Ooh. I think lack of initiative. Hmm. In in what sense? Um. I feel like, okay, like in terms of like work, for example, like if, if someone isn't, you know, putting in their part or like even in just like life, I think also like if, when people are like, oh, I want to do all of these things, but then they don't actually do it because they're like I scared think. or lazy. I don't know. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Sounds good. What's your secret superpower? Ooh. <laughs> My or, or secret let's, let's, superpower. I'll give you another. I'll give you another option. No, 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 no. no, I, no, 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 no I can answer that. I can answer. All right. Okay. I would say. I would say curiosity. Does that count? Okay, that works. Okay. So it's. I actually completely forgot we we're gonna ask that question. So that was a one. That was a new <laughs> question that Deepam and I were talking about. Uh, you're actually the guinea pig for that one. You're the first one we asked that question. You're the first person we asked this question. Yeah. Okay. I mean, what I was gonna ask you, we, we'll decide whether we're gonna keep this or not, but. What is the uh, superpower you wish you had? Ooh. And I think I know the answer to that, but we'll see. Let's see if I'm right. You think, wait, can I hear your answer first? Nah, I mean, it's pretty common, right? It's, uh, okay, you go and then I'll tell you. Secret? Um, I guess I wish I could be in multiple places at once because there's just so many things I want to do. I knew it. I was going to say teleportation. I was gonna say you exactly. Like to that's that's most, what I was thinking too. That's 99% exactly thinking. of the people say teleportation. Uh, so that's, that's how I knew it. Wow, you guys are really making me think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't want to hear mine? I think mine is going to be like, I, I wish uh, there was like background music in my head for different Ooh. situations that I'm running into. I got one. I like that. Subtitles. So like you can like understand what people are thinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That would stress me out so much. Well well, know. imagine you go to another country and like no matter what language you're speaking, you know exactly what they're saying. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that would uh, work out well for Ruthie. That's cool. Um, all right. All right. So um what's your uh, biggest accomplishment in the last one year or two years? Ooh. That is so hard. I feel like the last like two years have actually been really memorable. Like lots of, lots of big things have happened. Um, like just last month I climbed Machu Picchu, which I think was like a big accomplishment. Um, this past, actually now it's been like a little over a year. I bought my first condo in SF. So that was like really exciting for me because I'd been saving for that for a really long time. Um, I think what else and of course launching Terra edition Terra, so yeah, yeah there's been there's been a lot of a lot of exciting things and hopefully this next year you know it just keeps getting better and better you have one hey, more man. to add to the list and that list is being a podcast guest oh yes <laughs> this is my first podcast ever all right yeah it's a good one it's a good one that is a okay, good one so i gotta do a little bit of self plugging too right <laughs> no it's so true now i can say i've been on a podcast which is so fun <laughs> For sure, for sure. So um, I think this ends the rapid fire. The next question is uh, not a rapid fire, but what's next for you? Ooh, what's next for me? Um, that's such a hard question. I mean, I would say just generally, like, I want to keep traveling, keep exploring the world, keep meeting new people, like how I've met you guys through this podcast. Um, and yeah, just keep going after things that I'm excited about. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, from the rapid fire round, I think we're good. Um, I guess, Ruthie, do you have any questions for us? Who who are you guys interviewing next? Oh, you're going to love this answer, actually. This is the episode I was saying I'm super excited about, or at least I started to say. 
But oh, Devon's bowing down to Ooh, for that one. Who is it? That's a huge one. Yeah. So he's not so far. You know Bangra Empire? Sure. <laughs> oh, they're huge in the bay. Actually, they're they're located in the bay, but they hold the. So is it like one of one of those people? No, the founders. So we literally. Oh, cool. Yeah. So we literally got are getting on the two founders of Bangra Empire. They have so much media coverage. They're one of the biggest Bangra um, groups, especially on the West Coast. 650,000 on Instagram, verified and everything. And it's such a funny story how we got them on. Um, the credit actually goes to Shika for that one. Because uh, basically, I was talking to my sister-in-law, right? And she, I asked her, like, what kind of guest should I get on? And she told me Bollywood. So then I just reached out to a couple of people that I knew. And I was like, if you guys know anyone in Bollywood, that would be a great person to, to get on as a podcast guest. Mm-hmm. Shika, Shika basically says that she can try to ask the people from Bangra Empire, right? Because she actually goes to the, the courses for them, like the, the Bangra classes. And so mm-hmm. the way we got this set up was hysterical because Shika was in the Bangra class. She like, at the very end of the class, she walks up to like the founders of that Bangra class, the ones that were also the instructors and asked them, he's like, hey, you know, a really good friend of mine actually has a podcast. Would you guys be interested in being podcast guests? And so they actually said yes. And then like, she told them to like, wait to get a DM on Instagram from the podcast page, the Your Love and Filter wow, podcast page. Wow, that is so cool. Yeah, so we sent them a message and then lined it up. So we're actually recording with them tomorrow. It's the okay. biggest It's the biggest guest we're going to have by far. Like 650000 It's a huge deal for us. This is huge. Congrats, guys. I'm so excited to listen to it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, yeah. We're super excited as well. It's the biggest one we had so far. Um, I feel and like yeah, after gonna... that one, you guys are going to blow up. Yeah. You're just gonna keep getting bigger and bigger, guys. It's gonna be awesome. I, I am gonna. Go ahead. We're gonna invite you back once you're even bigger than. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now don't forget me. <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, it's a funny story. Have so like I have some other guests that are interested, but I don't want to bring them on just yet because they are incredibly huge. So, um, I, when I you know about my creator page, right? At Cake Plus too, my creator page. Yes. Which I'm not really so active on anymore, but I used to be like. Why are you not active anymore? I just have so much going on that I haven't been focusing on it. I just put some fun reels here and there, but like I haven't really been posting much on okay, there. Okay. But basically when I used to like grow that page out, like I reached out to a lot of people and like connected with a lot of other people. And so some I'm now reaching out to some of those people that I connected with like years later. So there's actually one person that I'm really, um, that's already said he's interested, but I haven't lined it up yet because I want us to be bigger before we bring him on. But it's um it's this guy in Australia actually. He does like a lot of like combat sports and like you know like the stuff like doing I forget what it's called, like where you jump from rooftop to rooftop and like do like you run up on parks. Yes, parkour? thank you, parkour. He, it's this huge guy in Australia that has like one point eight million that does all these kind of parkour stunts. So he has one point eight million on TikTok and like three hundred three hundred K on Instagram. So that's the guest that I'm working on lining up. Like he's already interested, but I just haven't scheduled yet because I was like I don't know if it's going to be interesting if he sees our page is pretty tiny right now. So, <laughs> Wow, congrats, though. This is, this is all really exciting. Yeah. For sure, for sure. I think uh, we are coming to the close of our uh, discussion here, Ruthie. So thank you so much for your time. Before we wrap up, do you have any recommendations for our listeners? And uh, just for your reference, a recommendation could be a book or a TV series or, or a podcast that you've recently come across. Yeah. Um, or a movie. I would say my new favorite podcast is how I built this which I know everyone listens to but I think it's just super fun you get to learn about different companies how they came up with their ideas and how they got to where they are today yeah yeah you know my favorite one from how I built this is five guys I, I don't know if you've listened to this yet yeah, that's the best one so far yeah um, but yeah it's a great podcast highly recommend it to everyone um, okay that's awesome well it was such a pleasure having you on Ruthie um Hopefully, like, we'll try to bring you on, you know, at some point in the future. Hopefully, by then, you'll be, like, verified as Ruthie the Explorer. And, like, <laughs> and, like, Thanks uh, for the belief in me. <laughs> businesswoman of the year. Exactly. And then, yeah, like, Terra Edition being, like, brought into, like, you know, big stores like Nordstrom or Macy's or something. Right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Thanks, friends. I really appreciate all the support. You both are awesome. All right. All right. Well, awesome. Uh, this was absolutely wonderful. Um, you know, thank you all for joining. And of course, if you're not following it already, everyone, all, all the listeners here, please be sure to like, share and subscribe your life on filter on Instagram, as well as give us a rating on Spotify. We are a relatively new podcast, so it'd be absolutely amazing to get more reviews and we appreciate everyone's support. Thanks and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.
Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye.